Chemistry Lecture Number 69, Gay-Lussac's Law and the Combined Gas Law. The volume of a gas can be affected by temperature and pressure. If the temperature increases, the volume increases. If the gas is compressed or put under higher pressure, its volume decreases. What would happen if we kept the volume of a gas constant and increased the temperature? Under these conditions, the pressure of the gas would increase. For example, suppose I take a glass jar with the lid screwed on top. Uh, the volume of the gas inside the jar does not change. So here I have a picture of a uh, glass jar. It has the lid screwed on top of it. So the gas inside of here, uh, it's going to maintain the same volume as long as the lid is uh, screwed on top of it. If we heat the jar, the temperature of the gas inside increases and the gas molecules move faster. If the gas molecules move faster, they exert more pressure. So here's a picture of our <coughs> glass jar being heated with a candle flame. And when it gets heated by the uh, candle flame, <coughs> excuse me, um, the molecules inside increase in temperature, and if it increases in temperature, it means they're moving faster, and if they move faster, they exert more pressure inside the jar. Thus, a gas at a higher temperature exerts more pressure if the volume is kept constant. Uh, this is an example of uh, Gay-Lussac's law. Gay-Lussac's law can be expressed mathematically. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, where P1 is the initial pressure of the gas, T1 is the initial temperature of the gas in kelvins, P2 is the new pressure of the gas, uh, T2 is the new temperature of the gas in kelvins. Notice that the temperature must be in kelvins for the formula to work. Let's try a problem. The temperature of a gas in a sealed glass jar is 101 kilopascals at 22 degrees Celsius. If the temperature rises to 60 degrees Celsius, what will be the gas pressure in the jar? So what we need to do first is we need to convert these Celsius temperatures into Kelvin temperatures. So the formula for converting Celsius temperature into Kelvin is K equals C plus 273, where C is the Celsius temperature. All right, so 22 degrees, put that in place of C becomes 295 degrees Kelvin. So that's the initial temperature. And then the gl uh, gas is heated to 60 degrees Celsius. So we'll put that in place of C. So 60 plus 273 gives me 333 uh, degrees Kelvin. So that is the new temperature, right? the new or the final temperature. Um, the initial pressure is 101 kilopascals. And what we want to know is, what's the new pressure going to be after we heat the gas? And if we heat the gas, we'd expect the pressure to be higher. All right, well, here's the formula we use for uh, Gay-Lussac's law. P1 over T1 equals P2 over uh, T2. P1 is 101. T1 is 295. P2, that's what we're going to solve for. T2 is 333. So that goes right there. So to solve for uh, P2, uh, we cross multiply. 295 times P2, right here, equals 101 times 333. 101 times 333. So 101 times 333 and then divided by 295. So you would divide both sides by 295. 295s cancel. So P2 is 101 times 333 divided by 295 and you'll get 114 kilopascals. And this is a rounded answer. I think the actual answer is 114.0 something, 01, 0 thing. But anyway, we round to three significant digits. So does the answer make sense? Um, we predict that if the temperature increases from 22 to 60, this pressure should increase. So it goes from 101 to 114. And that answer makes sense. So um, that's the answer. <clears throat> a gas has the uh, properties of pressure, volume, and temperature. 
Gay-Lussac's law predicts changes in pressure when the temperature changes. Charles' law predicts changes in volume when the temperature changes. Boyle's law predicts changes in volume when the pressure changes. How do we predict the uh, change in volume if both pressure and temperature change? The combined gas law can predict the change in one gas property if two properties change. The combined gas law can be expressed mathematically. And there's the combined gas law formula. P1V1 over T1 is P2V2 over T2. And P1 is the initial pressure. V1 is the initial volume. T1 is the initial temperature in kelvins. P2 is the new pressure. V2 is the new volume and T2 is the new temperature in kelvins. And again, notice that the temperature must be in kelvins for the formula to work. And so the combined gas law is really just Boyle's law and Charles' law and Gay-Lussac's law combined. If I put my fingers over the temperature, you got Boyle's law. If I put my fingers over the pressure, you get V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, so that's Charles' law. And then if the volume doesn't change, you get um, Gay-Lussac's law, P1 over T1 equals P2 over V2, P2 over T2. So really all you need to do is uh, memorize the combined gas law and then if the temperature doesn't change uh, you just cross that out. If the pressure doesn't change you know you cross out the, uh, the P's and then if the volume doesn't change you just cross out the V's. Right? So uh, just memorize this one formula and you'll have memorized uh, all three major gas laws, Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law. All right, so let's uh, do this problem. Do, a, do something that uses this formula. A gas at a volume of 112 kilopascals and 30 degrees Celsius has an initial volume of 2 liters. Find the volume if the temperature is raised to 80 degrees Celsius and the pressure is raised to 445 kilopascals. So we're changing two things. We're increasing the temperature, which would cause the volume to uh, increase. And then we're raising the pressure. We're compressing the gas. And that would cause the volume to decrease. So what's going to happen? You've got one factor that's increasing the temperature and another factor that's, uh, um, well, we have the temperature increasing, which would increase the volume. And then you have the pressure increasing, which would decrease the volume. So you have two conflicting things. All right, well, first off, let's convert our Celsius temperatures into Kelvin temperatures. 30 degrees, put that in place of C in this formula. 30 plus 273 is 303 Kelvin. So that's the initial temperature. And then 80 degrees Celsius, 80 in place of C. 80 plus 273 gives me 353 Kelvin. So this is the uh, new temperature. Um, the initial pressure is 112. The initial volume is 2. The new pressure, 445. And we're going to solve for the new volume. All right, so it looks like, uh, yeah, temperature is changing and pressure is changing. And we want to know what's going to happen to this 2 liters. Is it going to get bigger or smaller? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these numbers and stick the numbers into the formula. So our formula is P1 V1 T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. <clears throat> P1, the initial pressure was 112. Uh, the initial volume is 2. And the initial temperature was 303. The pressure increased to 445, so that's P2. We don't know the new volume. That's what we're going to solve for. And we do know the temperature increased to 353. So 112 times 2 over 303 is going to be equal to 445 times V2 divided by 353. And what we're going to do to solve for V2 is we'll cross multiply 303 times 445 times V2 303 times 445 times V2 equals 112 times 2 times 353. 112 times 2 times 353. And then to get V by itself, we would divide both sides by 303 times 45. So what we could do is we could divide both sides by 303 and 445. So if we do that, 
303 cancels, 445 cancel. We're left with V2 equals 112 times 2 times 353 divided by 303 times 445. So if you multiply everything on top and then divide it by the product at the bottom, you get 0.586 liters. All right. So it looks like the uh, volume decrease, so the temperature increase wasn't enough to expand the volume, and the large increase in the pressure from uh, 112 to 445, that had a greater factor in uh, affecting the volume. It squashed it. It made the volume smaller, and the increase in temperature wasn't enough to compensate for the squashing of the volume by the pressure. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture Number 69, Gay-Lussac's Law and the Combined Gas Law.